I'm Coach Julie Good Enough, and I've got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right. We're searching all over the globe. We are combing this country. We're finding rising stars, future phenoms, super sensations in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, if your hood ain't hood enough and your good ain't good enough, let's go. We're going to take them to a new level today, ladies and gentlemen. Purple rain, purple rain. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We got the OG in the building. We got an icon. We got a legend. We are talking about 500 plus wins in the game, ladies and gentlemen. 30 plus years of coaching. And now she is finding a home and doing big things over there at Abilene Christian University. I've been practicing this all day long. Yes. Let me see if I can get yes. it right. Yes. Wow, Cat Nation! Let's make some noise for Haskell, Texas finest, Julie Good enough. <laughs> Coach, what's up? How you doing today? Man, that's like the most awesome intro ever. That was that was good. I'm ready to go play. Was it good enough? Oh, it was better than good enough. <laughs> hey, check this out. If this is your first time watching the program and rocking with your boys, I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. We'll put your L's up. Mr. Yee is in the building, and I am rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the quiet storm. Shh. The head coach, KT. Kev, we pulled it off, baby. It's been two years in the making. Mama, we made it. Look at what we have done. We got Coach Gooden up on the show. How you feeling today, sir? B. Jones, the one thing we can say about Coach is she keeps her word because she told us, hey, I'm going to do the show. She did. And of course, B. Jones, I don't know if you knew this, but she's an alumni. I know. I saw that. I saw that uh, when I started planning on this and I was doing my research. I said, oh, I know he's going to try to he gonna try to lick that up. UCA stand up. Of course, man. She got buckets there. I got buckets, but it was in like in a rec center. But still, we got buckets at UTA, B. Jones. I'm turned up. It don't matter because I did a show with Coach Kendra Whitehead, who is not a head coach at Harden Simmons. And guess where Coach Julie Goodenough come from? She coached at Harden Simmons and won 188 wins over there. So guess what? I'm in the family, too. Now what, Playboy? Uh, ish, because I did the same show with Coach Whitehead, but nice try, B. Oh, yeah, Jones. That's, 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 good point. that's a good point. All right, Coach, good enough. Before we get started, we got we to gotta get this thing ready, all right? So we need you to grab your right hand, Coach. We need you to reach above your shoulder. We need you to pull that strap down, and we need you to buckle up, because this thing is about ready? to be a fun ride. It's about Let's to be go. a crazy ride. All right, check this out. ACU, Wildcat Nation. We got to pay the bills, and by paying the bills, we don't mean actually a, a financial transaction. We need a transaction of love. That's right. We need you to close out season three with a bang and show us some love and do three simple things. Three things that won't cost you a penny, but can go a mile. You hear me? Those three things. Number one, we need you to subscribe to the channel. That's right. If you believe in stories of inspiration, of positivity, of motivation, of people who are changing the course of our society today, smash that subscribe button. Number two. We need you to hit that like button. That's right, because every time you hit that like button, this show just goes on the up algorithm. It just bubbles all the way up to the top. And then number three, 
Last but not least, it's holiday season, and we all know what time it is. You got to give, and Sharon is caring, so I know it's somebody out there in your circle that need to hear this show, so smash that share button, put this in your coworker group, your WhatsApp, your Facebook page, however you communicate with your immediate circle, share this episode so we can just t- we can spread the good news. Is that fair enough, Coach? Good enough? That's awesome. That's can awesome. We, can, Love can, it. Can, can purple rank and purple nation? I'm Kevin, I'm gonna go change hoodies. I'm gonna go put that purple drip on right now because I feel like something special is gonna crack off tonight. But coach, here we go. Let's do it like we true to a wildcat nation. Make some noise. One, two, three. Boom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, yeah, Kevin. I ain't gonna be able to sleep tonight. All the Wildcats gonna be sharing this. It's just all the dings on my phone gonna be going crazy. I'm gonna be like, you gotta turn that off tonight. The ACU is acting up. All right, here we go. Coach, good enough. It is time for your sports life talk initiation. Okay, I'm ready. All right, coach, to initiate you into the SLT family, you gotta give us your top five music artists. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with Blake Shelton, number one. Uh, probably a close second, Keith Urban, Kenny Chesney, Taylor Swift, uh, Kirk Carr. I don't know the last one. I was uh, I was up the pole with the first one. Okay. I know I know one Keith Urban song, and he used to be married to like uh, Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah, they still are. They still yeah. married. Okay, I, I see. I know Keith Urban. He got he yeah he got that soup that smooth voice. And uh, and and then it was uh, number three was a big Kenny one too. He a big Saints fan. People don't know that Kenny Chesney is a huge Saints Nobody fan. Nobody cares about him being a Saints oh, fan. I like Kenny Chesney. Yes. You know what I'm saying, Kevin, what are you giving, Coach? Well, I'm giving you a hard time. Nobody cares about him being a Saints fan, but uh, whatever. It's, it's, this is a sports program, Kevin. Come on now. Yeah, but this is a uh, Coach Good Enough show. Stop. All right, so Coach, what we like to do we like to rank everybody's top five, and yeah. the highest you can get is five. B. Jones, there's no way I can give a coach of this stature anything less than five. Legend. Can't give her anything less than 15. Icon. Can't give her anything less than 25. Hall of Famer. How many years has she been coaching, B. Jones? 30 plus years, but I don't know if I got that in me, KT. I'm not properly hydrated. (laughs) Well, for coach, you should have 30 in you, right? I got 30 in me. Let's do it, man. Let's go. Nice. Very now, Coach, good. I want to let you know that that's the most that we've ever given anybody on thank the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. On I top of that, that, it's an honor. Oh, no, thank you for rocking with us. On top of that, our budget is 25. <laughs> we just blew the budget. So we just blew the budget. So if the Appreciate lights go it. out, Coach, just know that it's not us. The producers pulled the plug. So no. please don't do that, y'all. Take care, no. Coach. Good enough. <laughs> No, nah, Kevin, we'll just take it from the next person's show. We'll just take whatever you get, we'll just subtract five from them. There you and go. give it to Coach Good Enough. You said that I didn't. That's All good right, so, math. Good math. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? So, currently, it would have to be Gamora off Guardians of the Galaxy because my husband is like my Star Lord, Peter Quill, and I'm his Gamora. <laughs> well, shout out to Gamora. That's the first time she's ever been mentioned on the show as a favorite Absolutely. superhero. So, that, that's dope. Every superhero has their own theme music, and we consider every coach that comes on our show a superhero. With that said, what would your theme song be? Okay, so it would be In the Sanctuary by Kirk Carr. Like, that would be my walk-up song, my theme song. That's the one. You got to sing that one for us, Coach. Oh, no. No, I can't do that for practice. No. <laughs> hey, and when when you do come watch the Wildcats play, that is our starting introduction song. Well, what's the name of the song again, Coach? In the Sanctuary. In the sanctuary, all right. By Kirk Carr. Y'all gotta look it up. I mean, you're oh, we will. it all the time now. So we got a playlist that we have that everybody that comes on the show and they give us a theme song. We're adding that to it. So we got a coach's nice. playlist. So there you go. we'll be sending it to you pretty soon. Very good. Appreciate all right, it. So, all right. What is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're now on the court? Yeah, um, I think just in life, I mean, if you're not gritty and tough, life will just eat you alive. And so I played for some really tough coaches in high school and college. And I think just instilling that grit and toughness um, has really helped me throughout the course of my life. Being a coach, being a wife, being a mother, um, you know, just you got to have some grit and toughness. You've got to have resiliency to bounce back. 
You know, we can't always control what happens to us, but we 100% of the time control our response. And mine's going to be gritty and tough. I'm going to fight back, bounce back every time. All right. So we've been doing this show for three years now, and your name has come up numerous times. So that speaks to the amount, the impact that you've made on the basketball community. Um, With that said, are there any coaches who have had a significant impact on you and your coaching journey? Yeah. Um, so I started out a long time ago. Uh, my first head coaching job was at Hardin Simmons and probably the most influential single, most influential coach in my career was the, uh, the football coach at Hardin Simmons at that time, Jimmy Keeling and Jimmy Keeling would sit in my office almost every day to open his mail. And this is back way before email. And I mean, this guy got so much mail from recruits and coaches and he would sit in my office and open the mail and we would just talk about coaching. And the thing I learned pretty quickly is, you know, coaching is coaching, whether it's football or basketball, it's about relationships. It's about getting to know your players and figuring out, you know, what their learning styles are, how to push their buttons to help them reach their potential. So I would say he's number one as far as just influential in my career. Um, but I started back in the day uh, when Jody Conrad was at Texas and Marsha Shopper at Texas Tech. And I would go to every coaching clinic where they were speaking in the state of Texas. And I would just try to be a sponge. And uh, that's really how I kind of formulated what we did at Hardin Simmons. It was things that I learned from the Texas Lady Longhorns and the uh, Texas Tech Lady Raiders. So do you think Julie, the Hooper, would be good enough to play for you as a head coach? I would have to change my style of play a lot. Uh, so when I went to college, um, that's the first time that I saw a three-point line. We didn't have it in high school. Uh, when I went to college, saw the three-point line. But my first two seasons, I actually played at a junior college. I played at Western Texas College. Um, and my coach, I mean, we never worked on threes. We didn't shoot them hardly at all. Um, and I was a shooting guard. Uh, I shot a lot of pull-up jumpers. I shot a lot of uh, turnaround jumpers. Um, I was really fast. I was able to, you know, snowbird and get lots of layups. Uh, but my team now, we shoot in the paint. You know, just all the analytics that we have show that, you know, you can score more points um, if you shoot higher percentage shots, which are in the paint, and three-pointers. Uh, so we work on all kinds of finishes in the paint. We work on three-point shots, and we work on free throws. Um, you know, I'm not the smartest coach around, but I know threes add up faster than twos. Uh, so we do work on lots of threes. So I would have to change my style of play a lot from how I played in college. And uh, even at UTA, we had a couple of three-point shooters, but it's not something that we worked on. And so uh, to play on my team, I would have to get in the gym and, and put up thousands of threes. All right, so B. Jones and I, we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actress. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Well, similar to being Gamora, I think that uh, Zoe Saldano would probably be a good coach good enough. Um, if not her, probably somebody like just intense, strong leader like Jessica Chastain. Um, so, yeah, but I would Ooh. say one of those if they're available. I was going Diane Keaton, but I, I like that. Uh, I like that Jessica Chess name better. Yeah, but you know we already blew our budget for this episode. Can you imagine the budget oh. we got to have for both of them, for either one of those, uh, Zoe or uh, Jessica? Mm -hmm. But we are for the challenge, Coach. Whatever. Thank we, you. Whatever we can do to honor you. All right. So this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you during the initiation. Okay. B. Jones and I would love to travel, and when we travel, we got to eat. So what is that one food spot in Abilene that we got to go to that gets your stamp of approval and what's your go-to meal there? Okay, so our celebration restaurant, like I, we have two grown daughters. Um, if it's anybody's birthday, we always choose Perini's, Perini's Ranch. And it's actually in Tuscola, which is from our house, probably about 15 minutes south. And it's a steakhouse. Uh, their steaks just melt in your mouth. They're grilled chicken or grilled catfish. I mean, it's all just so good. And it's really, you know, it's a pretty special meal for us if we have time to go out to Perini's Ranch. Perini's Ranch sounds we like home, JT. We have got to go there. Good I'm going to pull around and commit to ACU before this show is over with. I need to start scheduling my official visit, Coach. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. All right, so calling all basketball buffs and court-sized connoisseurs. It's showtime. 
prepare to be dazzled as we welcome a true hoops vir virtuoso to the mic. With a whistle in hand and a playbook that's the envy of the league, our guest has been the ar architect of triumphs and compass guiding her team to victory. From fast breaks to clutch shots, she's orchestrated it all. So huddle up and get ready to score some high, some serious high insights with the phenomenal head coach of Abilene Christian University, Coach Good Enough. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Because if it ain't good enough, good enough, baby, I work, work harder. harder. Yeah. yeah. Coach Good Enough in the building. <laughs> I'm super excited about having you on this thing. First and foremost, though, I got to send a shout out to Coach Mack. Because Coach Mack almost asked me for my autograph, but we was nobody. <laughs> Coach Mack came up to me. Coach Mack was like, hey, you the mouth of the south. I was like, yeah, that's me. He was like, man, I love y'all show. I love y'all show. We were like, well, tell us who you are. He said, man, I work I work for Julie good enough. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm Mr. Nobody. I, I had to go search his name out. He ain't want no recognition. But that dude is super cool. Every time we see him in city after city, he come and holler at us. So, uh, so shout out to Coach Mack before we get started. But Coach, good enough. Let's That's take awesome. him back to the beginning. Let's take him back to the beginning. Let's go. Okay. Let's super hype. What made you decide to choose the game of basketball? And when did you fall in love with the game, Coach? Yeah, so I started playing basketball in the third grade. And if you know anything about Haskell, Texas, a little bitty small rural farming community, uh, but we had a really good little dribblers program. And so, man, I love that. I mean, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, played basketball, um, played out on my driveway all the time. My mom rebounded for me or my dad rebounded for me. Um, my dad actually coached uh, my fifth and sixth grade teams. And, you know, I just, I loved it. And it was something I could, you know, play with my brothers. We would play basketball. Um, in full transparency, you know, I, I, I played softball. We didn't have it at my high school, but we would play softball through the summer and like on the weekends. Um, I played golf a little bit, played tennis a little bit. Um, but I loved basketball. I loved playing on a team of five and I love playing indoors. I mean, you can play basketball like 12 months out of the year. We don't care if there's blizzard outside or if it's 117 degrees, you know, it doesn't matter. You can play inside. Um, but Probably my favorite thing is just it's five people working together as one unit. And, and I just love that. Well, coach, I can tell you what um, the things that you've accomplished in your career is just phenomenal. I don't think I think we might have had one other coach that's got like 30 years of experience. That's that shout out to Coach Carol Owens at Notre Dame. And it's kind of crazy because as you do research on you guys and it's like I see some of these pictures and I'm like, man, that picture like you've been around. You've been around for the block for a minute but what, what, what i marvel about this is your ability to transition and keep up with time so coach how how has one managed to be in this game for 30 plus years and to lead so many institutions as a head coach how does one change adapt transform reinvent themselves time and time and time again yeah i I think you become irrelevant if you uh, are not staying current on, you know, what the NBA is doing, what, you know, Power Five schools are doing, how are people scoring? And I've always been geared towards the offensive side of basketball. I think it's super fun to watch a team that's averaging 75 to 80 points a game. And so I'm, you know, constantly watching videos and trying to talk to coaches about, you know, how do you score at a high clip? Uh, my, when I played at UTA, we were very three out, two in. Post players had to touch the ball before you thought about shooting. And so, you know, and, and in my first few years at Hardin Simmons, you know, and trying to run things like the Lady Raiders, the Lady Longhorns, they had like all American post players. So we were very um, inside out, lots of high low. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go from Hardin Simmons to Oklahoma State. And we ran that same kind of system. We had like six, four, six, five, six, six. And so a lot of inside out, lots of high low was good. Um, I go out to Charleston Southern, uh, mid-major division one, very similar to ACU private school. We could not get any even six footers to come on visits. And I was like, we can't play this inside out hollow anymore. We, we can't get six, even a six footer. So I just started, you know, trying to do some research. And um, what really caught my attention was this dribble drop motion. And so we went to some Calipari clinics. I just blew my staff around. We went to clinics, uh, really had a lot of help from his staff. He was at Memphis at the time and they sent us videos and notes and practice plans and things like that. 
and um, kind of fell in love with the concept with just let's shoot threes, free throws, and shots in the paint. And uh, it was really hard at first to, to completely change from post players have to touch the ball before you know you shoot on the perimeter. Um, but it's a really fun style. And at Charleston Southern, we just started recruiting towards that. We had to find three-point shooters and folks that could beat their girl off the dribble. Um, but it does not work if you don't have a great inside scoring post player. So we still had to go after post players that could score. And that's a huge key to what we do, just having that um, good scoring presence inside. Uh, so we, we had success with that. We played in the WBI a couple of times at Charleston Southern. Um, got the opportunity to come back to West Texas, where I'm from, to coach at Abilene Christian. And they already had great three-point shooters here. And then, you know, I just kind of ran with what we had. And then we continued adding shooters and big-time scoring threats in the paint. Um, but we, we do tweak things from time to time. I mean, this is my 12th year to coach at ACU and so we still we play some of the same teams we've been playing and so you've got to change things up a little bit um tweak things a bit um just you know so that people don't know your whole bag of tricks we actually added a whole new um offense last week that we've never run at ACU uh still some four out one in but completely different than what we've done the last few years so um I, I just think that there's probably nothing new under the sun but you do have to you know, keep an open mind and be creative, be a little bit flexible. Um, if you don't get the exact recruits you want, you may have to, you know, make some adjustments. We actually got just exactly the recruits we wanted in the 2023 <laughs> class, and they are already just rocking it out in practice, man. They're, they're awesome. And so I uh, really feel good, you know, about what we're doing right now in practice. But I do think that you've got to constantly um, be learning, be evolving, um, you know, as teachers and coaches, we have to be lifelong learners for sure. Well, she being modest, KT, because not only did she take over a new program, a program that was, you know, like she's, you know, anytime you take over a new program, unfortunately, it's just at a stage where they need help. They trying to grow. But coach, you, 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 you transition your game and the game is transitioned at the same time. So now you've had to deal with COVID while you've been on the campus of ACU, which is monumental for everybody. We could, we could probably do a whole series on just coaches coaching yeah. through that, 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 that horrible time in our, in our country. But also coach, you led ACU into division one basketball, which and with the whack. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, this is just too much for any. <laughs> any coaching staff to go through and handle all of this coach. So, so now you just got to tell us, I can put you in the corner now, coach. You got to tell us the real secret sauce. What is it? Is it magnesium at night? What is it? Well, you, you, did, what? <laughs> um, you know, you, you got to have a strong why. I mean, there has to be a strong internal like self-motivation to, to do any job. And man, I love coaching basketball. Um, and I've been in, really awesome uh, situations and coach for incredible universities where they've allowed me to use basketball as my ministry. Uh, we're able to integrate our faith in Christ and everything that we do. And I just, I love where I am. I love, you know, being able to make an impact on our players. We are so much more than about basketball. Uh, we do want to win. We want to win a, a WAC check championship for sure. We want to win every time we get on the court. And that's why we work so hard in practice. But we want our players to learn invaluable life lessons every day through our program. Um, and we can do it from a biblical principle. You know, we, we uh, have Team Chapel every Thursday. We talk about Jesus. We talk about allowing basketball to be a pedestal for us to honor Christ in the way that we treat each other, the way that we use our gifts and talents to the fullest. And so I just I love what I do. And, um, you know, my why is to make an impact and to grow Christian leaders that can go out and really influence the world. See, and all y'all over there like, oh, I want to play for her. She, she got this inspiration to Christ. And yes, yeah, she do. But guess what? I saw a post that got me scared to death of you, coach. And I'm going to tell, <laughs> tell y'all what that post was today. So coach good enough for standing in front of a white boy. You know what I'm saying? She wearing a, a, a nice tank top. She got on athletic clothes. This is a Memorial Day challenge, ladies and gentlemen. You start this Memorial Day challenge by running a mile. Then you come back after you just ran a mile. You do 100 push-ups. Next thing you know, you do a sit-up, squat. I mean, the crazy workout. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what dessert is for this whole workout? 
another mile. Another mile. And Coach said, we're going to get through it together and we're going to do it with teammates. Now, I don't know, Coach. <laughs> As I was about to commit to ACU, I realized that this, this shooting three-pointers all around the court, ain't, it, ain't what, it ain't what you selling, Coach. Y'all over there busting y'all butt and yeah. grinding at ACU, Coach. Tell, I, I, now tell us a little bit about that part of Julie Good enough. Hey, so I'm, I mean, I, I'm kind of a self-professed uh, workout warrior. I love working out. I start my day every day uh, with a workout. I go to a class here in town and I've got a coach that puts the workout out for me and all my classmates. And uh, I love to start my day like that. I feel like, uh, you know, I've got to keep myself in shape physically and mentally. And I have that high expectation for my players as well. And so I actually do that Murph challenge every Memorial Day. And uh, that's from uh, Navy SEAL, you know, something that has gone around the country. There's Murph challenges on Memorial Day and I, I do it every year. Uh, during COVID, I had to do it by myself. We weren't able to get all together. But, um, you know, I, I think that you've got to push your body out of your comfort zone, you know, as often as you can, or you'll never reach your potential as a human being. And so uh, for myself, you know, I've got to push myself physically, mentally, and uh, we do that to our players. We had a really tough practice today. And I told them at the end of it, this practice was about grit and toughness and getting you out of your comfort zone. And we saw some people break and we saw some people like elevate who they are on our team and encourage their teammates. And, um, you know, I think we moved the needle today because practice was so grueling and, and tough that, you know, you had to you had to get uncomfortable and figure out how to be okay with that. Well, coach, I'm not done with the, how you made me uncomfortable. Okay, I'm not done yet. So <laughs> then I keep scrolling. I'm like, okay, that's a little bit tough. Then I keep scrolling, Kevin, and guess what I find out? ACU has a wall full of charges so you get recognized by taking a charge at acu and, and and the crazy thing i don't know who these three young ladies is but they have taken a lot of charges over the last year coach that's part of that 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 keeping up with the joneses right that's part that well that's that's part of reinventing yourself yeah. who came up with that idea and i don't know if i'm cool with taking all these charges coach <laughs> you know the thing about taking a charge is that 100 percent of the time you get the ball you take a charge and you get the ball. And so to us, that's way more important than, you know, blocking a shot. It's really cool. The fans get excited. You block a shot, slap the ball against the, the wall on the baseline. Um, but, you know, the percentages show about 75% of the time the, the other team gets the ball back. So charges are super selfless. You are putting your body out there for temporary pain. I mean, it lasts like that long, right? But your team gets a ball back 100% of the time. So um, selfless is one of our core values. And that's for sure a way that you show your selflessness to your teammate. And it goes along with our philosophy on defense. You know, where we're funneling the basketball, you need to have a help side defender there ready to take a charge. Kevin, would you take a charge for me, sir? That's what I want to know. Are you that selfless? To where you would take a charge, KT. Are you talking about the basketball charge or one we're going to have to get in like a felony or something? Which one are we talking about here? <laughs> I was talking about a personal foul, sir. I'm yeah, man, I'll take a charge for you, man, but I ain't doing the other one for you. I'll just let you know that now. <laughs> man, you're absolutely nuts. All right, coach. We talked about some of this practice stuff, but we got we got to celebrate you. You, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. We had the opportunity to meet Coach Good enough more than two or three times. It's very rare that we get to see these individuals and build these types of relationships before they come on air. And uh, you are truly authentic all the way. So I just want to make sure this show is a celebration to you, Coach. And we can't do we can't go without celebrating 500 wins. We got to talk about that because not too many people can can sit on the sports light talk. You got next and tell us that they had the opportunity to put away 500 teams, 500 plus teams in their career. But coach, how sweet was that? And tell us what that historic moment was like for you when they brought you your game ball. Yeah, it, it was a really special moment. And, uh, you know, in the moment, I just I thought about all the incredible players I've been blessed to coach and the amazing assistant coaches that I've had. Um, you know, I started out at Hardin Simmons. I coached for nine years without an assistant coach. You know, I'd have some students that wanted to help, didn't have any assistants there. And I uh, learned to value assistance pretty quickly when I did have the opportunity to have assistance at, you know, my other three stops. So assistants have, have uh, you know, helped me become a much better head coach. And obviously 
recruiting high caliber, high caliber young women that are super talented that just will run through a wall for you and they go all in with your culture. Um, that's how you win ball games. Um, and I will say, uh, I couldn't have done this without my husband. He's been with me the whole way and it's not fun being a head coach's spouse for sure. And I think you hear a lot about like football coaches, wives and things like that. You don't hear much about female head coaches, husbands, but their, their life is hard. I mean, you know, you know, if we're playing well or not, because he stands up, he's cheering. If you see the top of his hat, things aren't going well. He's got like his, his head in his hands, you know, that's a barometer. Like we're not playing very well. Um, so, you know, big shout out to my husband for his support. Uh, my daughters, I uh, was pregnant with them while I was coaching at Harden Simmons. And um, so they've been around my teams their whole life. And for most of their lives, my players were their big sisters. And then really fast, like it flashed before our eyes. Now my teams are their little sisters. Um, and they sacrificed a lot of time with me so that I could coach. And, you know, I've spent so much time raising other people's children and not spending a ton of time with my girls in certain t certain times of their lives. So lots of credit goes to my supportive family. Um, and my interesting, you're saying, you know, we won 500 games, beat, you know, beat 500 opponents. My husband worked for a couple of weeks leading up to this 500th win. And he calculated how many times we had beat certain teams and which teams we have only beaten one time. And it was pretty interesting going through that and just seeing, you know, like how many times we've beaten this team or that team. And so pretty, pretty cool information, but now it's time to just build on that. But it was really fun in the moment for sure. Well, coach, I know every kid in the country peaked up. They got to the edge of their seats when you said, oh, we we shoot threes. And I tell <laughs> kids to shoot three-pointers. Yeah, that's what all they want to do now, coach. Probably, probably struggle from the free throw line, but can shoot three-pointers blindfolded. But coach, this is your moment. You, you got them in the, y'all with the whack. This is division one basketball. But tell everybody out there who's watching this show, regardless of what pocket of the country they're in, why should they want to come shoot threes and play some D and become a workout warrior at Abilene Christian University? Yeah. Hey, there's so many reasons why. I'll give you a couple, though. Um, the intentional Christian atmosphere at Abilene Christian is for everyone. You don't have to be a Christian. You only have to know what we're talking about. But the way it resonates is this awesome family atmosphere on our campus. Um, it's not just on campus. It's in the athletic department, too. Uh, this is the most supportive head coaching staff I have ever been on. Um, you know, after football game, I'm texting our head football coach. After one of my games, I'm getting a, a text from Rick, Rick McCarty from our baseball coach. I mean, like, it's just such a supportive head coaching staff. It makes it so fun to work here. And I think our players learn pretty quickly that it's just a big family within the athletic department, but even on the campus. Uh, we have phenomenal faculty here. They are either PhDs or they are experts in their fields. And so you're going to get a first class private school education here. You're going to be prepared to go on and be a rock star in the real world after you graduate from ACU. And basketball wise, we have a culture of excellence and um, we're going to help you become the very best human being you can be and win championships. Every player who has graduated under us, who's played their four years and graduated, has won at least one conference championship. Every player at ACU. And so those who stay will be champions. Well, y'all heard it straight from the mouth. If you're good enough, let's go to Abilene, Christian, baby. Let's make some magic happen. Coach, you ready to have a little fun with KT and I? Let's go. All right, Coach Julie, good enough. Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We're going to put on the full court press. We're going to do a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one, and you are now officially calling all the shots, all right? Okay. So have you ever played Would You Rather before, Coach? Yes. All right. Well, well, championship rounds is a sports life talk version of, of would you rather on steroids? So both yes. KT and I are going to make a pitch. We're going to give you an option. Whichever one of those pitches mean the most to you or you accept, you choose. That host will get a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. OK, okay. and uh, I am the defending champion. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all, hey, I'm I'm hot like fish grease right now. I'm I'm hot. I'm hot like some uh, what is it, Pal Palmary's Ranch? What is it called? Perini's. Perini. I'm hot like Perini's catfish. You hear me? That's what I'm saying. I'm rolling. I'm rolling strong. Let's go. Let's go, Wildcat Nation. Here we go. Round number one. Would you rather mentor, hire a player that's a GA 
They just, they never been a coach before. They have zero experience. You see that twinkle in their eye. You see that they are good enough to do this. You hire them. They go on to win championships, win rings. They roll it all back to you and say, hey, I learned from Coach Julie good enough. And that's my inspiration. Or coach a player that you recruited and no one gave them a chance. They make it to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without your love and guidance. Mm, mm, second one. <laughs> player first mentality. All right, coach. Uh, I'll let you make it with that one. All right, let's go, Kevin Rodgers. I can't, I can't, I can't ding. You I can't, can't. Coach a. I can't oh. give Coach an X. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. Would you rather host a traveling food show exploring delicious dishes from around the world for ESPNW where you get to interview other college coaches and pick their brains while eating at some of the best restaurants in the world or or would you rather have Netflix pull up on the campus of ACU on Monday we're gonna film two season last chance you style documentary to tell the story of Wildcat basketball we're gonna be able to highlight some of your players coach Mac yourself the institution but it is going to be probably the best ever recruiting tool you'll ever have yeah i'm gonna go with the best recruiting tool ever yeah, yeah. i have to do that yeah sorry kt i was down no, you did your, you did yeah I you did your thing man a little bit. A good one. i had to sauce it up a little bit all right doom, doom, ka. Doom, doom, ka. it is round three ladies and gentlemen the pressure is on we've entered round three and this is where we stop the talking and we take it to the feet all right we take it to the sneaker game both kt and i are huge sneaker fans coach as a matter of fact those of you who want to come hang out with us every wednesday nights at eight o'clock p.m central standard time we go live and we talk about everything including music education entertainment and i talk sneakers i do a segment called the drop all right all right so coach yeah you say hold that sneaker and we're gonna show you the heat we got what you call here we go coach on the count of three let's do it one Hold that sneaker coach good enough here we go three two one hold that sneaker oh and y'all both went with the purple I'm gonna go KT. Oh no, coach! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ain't no way, coach. That's these she right here. They, they, they were the custom. Yeah, made. Put, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put those away. She's already made the selection. She won't see those I, anymore. I got, I got JG somewhere on these shoes. Well, somewhere, like, yeah. We'll, we'll show it to her later, B Jones. Right now is my yeah. moment, coach. Thank you so much for picking me. <laughs> Thanks to you, I can say those two words, B. Jones, and new. And of course, I can use this line, B. Jones, you just wasn't good enough. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. You cut me deep, really Coach. Y'all made that deep. decision very hard. Well, good. I'm glad he won because the winner always gets to pay for dinner. No, oh, no problem. I got coach. I, I'm not paying for yours. But I got coach. <laughs> you are paying for love for dinner at the at the steakhouse, KT. All right, coach. We talked about the past. We talked about the amazing ACU and what you guys are over there accomplishing and why they should come be a part of that. But you know, the title of the show is Sports Life Talks. You got next. So, coach, what is up next for Coach Julie? Good enough. Yeah, um, we are down to seven practices before our first scrimmage. So that's all my focus right now. Uh, we have two scrimmages before our first game. We kick off our season on November the 6th. And so it's one day at a time, you know, one scrimmage at a time, uh, getting ready. I, I can't even think about, you know, the opening week. We actually open with two home games. So we're really excited about that. But, uh, you know, I really try to encourage our team and, you know, it starts with me, but you've got to be where your feet are. And we had a good practice today, but we need a better practice, you know, the next time we come together. And so it's just one day at a time, uh, trying to move the needle, trying to get better, trying to play uh, better basketball as a team. Uh, but the season does open up on November the 6th. It is right around the corner for sure. Um, have a really hefty non-conference schedule which I think will prepare us, uh, you know, for a lot of different styles of plays that, that we're going to see in the WAC. Um, the WAC is like 
all the other conferences in the league. We had so many players that left and players that transfer portaled in. And so, you know, it's just, it's hard to even anticipate what teams are going to be like, you know, so many player changes. Uh, I think we'll see some freshmen that make an impact in our league this year. I know we've got freshmen that are going to make an impact for our team. Uh, we're, we're led by Addie Martin and Bella Earl and uh, excited for them to, you know, uh, lead us again. Uh, Addie actually has this season and two more to go. She redshirted her first year, but Bella Earl's in her junior year. And uh, I mean, they pretty much have led us from day one. We, we really start our season back like the first week of June when our, our team arrives on campus. And those two have really risen to the top as leaders for our program. And so I'm excited to, to roll with them and give them the reins of our team and see what we can do this year. But we're really excited about it. Now, Coach, now I, I thought I, I, I got to get you on this one because you are on the precipice of being the most winningest coach in ACU history in a couple of seasons. You don't look forward to that uh, beating. I can't think of the, uh, the guy's name, but uh, it was a legendary coach that has got like three hundred some wins, and you are right. You knocking on the door. Yeah, uh, you know, you Earl put, McCoy. <laughs> yeah, you put together three or four good seasons, Coach. You could be the winningest. Like, so does does that factor in anything? Do you even care about that at all, Coach? You know, I feel like I have to just keep my myself grounded and, and just be where my feet are and let things take care of themselves. You know, we're going to yeah. foster the culture of our program every day and we're going to try to put wins together. Just take it one at a time uh, for sure to be talked about in the same, the same conversation with some of the former coaches at ACU is, is an honor. I tell you what is a little bit intimidating. Um, you know, so, several of our former ACU women's basketball coaches live in the Abilene area and I've looked up in the bleachers before and seen uh, Burl McCoy, Wayne Williams and Joyce Curtis all sitting up there together Together and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, that's, that's yeah. a, a, a burden, a responsibility that we want to, you know, make sure that we are upholding the traditions that they set, you know, before us. And so, um, yeah, you know, obviously we want to win as many games as we can. And uh, I love Abilene Christian and I feel a, a great sense of obligation to put a great um, product on the court every time we have the, the blessing of playing a basketball game. All right, Coach. We talked about Coach Mack, but give us a little bit of rundown of your coaching staff because we know it takes more than just Coach Julie good enough to get these wins. We know it's a team effort. It's a coaching staff and not just one leader. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your coaching staff, Coach. Yeah, well, you know, the, the rules change this, this year. We can have six coaches um, on staff, and so we've got a really good group of six. You mentioned Coach Mack. Uh, this is second year with us, and uh, – Really good on the analytics side. He's our, our video guy as well. Um, takes care of a lot of the, the analytics for us, shot charts, rebounding charts, things like that. Um, he works with our post players. Um, we just had the privilege of adding Jake Stevens to our staff. He's familiar with the WAC. He was coaching at another WAC institution. He assists Coach Mack with our uh, post players. He also runs our social media, and I think we have – I'll just say, you know, best social media in the WAC, and he does a phenomenal Pops. job with that. Thank you. Pops, Thank coach, you. for real, for real. Yeah. Well, uh, we have some social media folks within the athletic department, but obviously right now we're not in season, so they're really busy with our teams that are in season. And so really credit Coach Stevens with uh, keeping us relevant and lots of great content out there. Um, Kanisha Henry joined us from Central Arkansas, one of our foes in the Southland Conference. Uh, they were so defensive minded at Central Arkansas and, uh, you know, we were not, we were kind of the opposite. And so when we played like it was whoever style of play rose to the top was going to win that game. And so um, when I had another position that opened up, I uh, hired Coach Henry and she's really kind of our, our defensive uh, person. And, you know, every practice we have, I'm just really focused on the offense and she's like focused on the defense, you know, whether we've talked about that or not, that's sort of where her, her uh, filter goes. And so really blessed to have her here. She's the, our point guard position coach as well. Um, and then uh, we added uh, Amani Robinson, who was just a stud in the Southland. She played at Incarnate Word and then had the opportunity to play overseas for a couple of seasons. And she's back as an assistant coach and also director of ops. She's going to be in charge of our travel. She does a lot of our equipment as well. Um, and then Malone Graham uh, was a student manager at Texas Tech for the Lady Raiders and graduated from there. And 
she's uh, doing grad school at uh, Abilene Christian, and she's helping with the shooting guards, helping with uh, point guards. Coach uh, Amani Robinson, she's helping with the post players. Um, but Coach Graham is is doing a lot of great things for us behind the scenes. Just a no job is not your job kind of a person, and so really thrilled with our staff. Um, we lost two com- two key components from our staff in the spring. Never in my career have I lost two assistant coaches at a time, and I've never lost two that left to be head coaches at the same time. And just such a cool uh, situation. They were both uh, blessed with coaching opportunities yeah. to go on and be head coaches, and you know, really, really uh, proud of them. And I'm I'm excited to see how they do their first season as a head coach. Hey, congratulations to them. That's dope. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. So. This is the part where you can give give your shout outs. So what shout outs do you have, coach? What shout outs do I have? Um, you know, I just I think I have a, a great spirit of gratitude and I'm always, you know, trying to think of, you know, people that um, have done so much for me and um you know, I've got, I'm surrounded by great staff, have a great administration. Um, my boss, Zach Lasseter, has just changed the complexion of our athletic department. Our president is the best university president in the country, Phil Schubert. And he's a dear friend of mine as well. And, you know, just have so many people pouring into our program. We've got great donors, a uh, great fan base, a uh, great you know, just people around our program. And so I, I just feel, you know, truly blessed to be in the position that I'm in. Um, you know, second shout out really to my husband, Rob. Uh, he's, he's you know, the, the rock of our family. He's a junior high principal. Uh, so he's an educator as well. My daughters are phenomenal. Uh, they also graduated from Abilene Christian. And so as a parent, I know what an incredible place Abilene Christian is. <clears throat> they are both teachers and coaches, so they followed in our footsteps. And that is such uh, just a, a surreal thing to happen to, you know, for your kids to follow in your career steps and have careers similar to yours. Um, you know, they're both just rock stars. My daughter, Macy, coaches at Monterey High School in Lubbock. And our older daughter, Bailey. What? Yeah, yeah. Monterey got a hey, Monterey is dope. Yes, Monterey is dope. Yeah, you tell your daughter she is the cause for me having heartburn one night because we had Coach Kit Kyle on the show over at Mansfield Timberview, and uh, we were we were watching the game before. Monterey was going to play uh, Mansfield Timberview that Friday, yes. and that game went into seven overtime. So your daughter was the coach. Yes, oh, that's no. seven over- she is not the basketball coach. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the coach's staff. And, and let me tell you what. This is. Uh, I have learned a lot about this sport. I didn't know anything about it. My daughter is the varsity coach for the cheerleading squad at oh, Monterey High sport. School. I saw and bring so, it on, coach. I saw bring it on. That's a sport. Yeah. Yeah, and so they were at that game. I mean, they were at the, you know, the crazy overtime game uh, where they, Monterey beat Emerald High, and I mean, just amazing, you know. Um, but yeah, but she never has off season. They work out year round. I've learned a lot about cheerleading. And our kids were not cheerleaders. You can imagine it in a coach's house. We kind of downplay cheerleading, right? And so, but it's really in her wheelhouse. She's a phenomenal coach, great mentor. Um, she's she's in graduate school at Texas Tech while she's full time, so she's rocking it out. Um, our oldest daughter Bailey is in New Braunfels, and she coaches all the sports at a middle school at Danville Middle School in New Braunfels. And so we're really really proud proud of them, and and they're just living life really well. All right, Coach. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? And before you go, I already told her B. Jones. Her name has been mentioned like three times as a nomination. Several. Several. So she got to give us three to make up for that, B. Three. Uh, okay, I'm trying to think back through y'all seasons, just people that you had have had on. Um, I tell you someone who, uh, you know, I, I really have a lot of respect for, uh, that's Ayla Gazzardo down at Southeastern Louisiana. Hey, uh, put yeah. your hands up. All yeah. right, Coach Gazzardo. Did I say that right? Gazzardo? Yes. First name right. Ayla. And, uh, yeah, she's done a tremendous job there. And, um, you know, we were really good rivals, uh, when we were in the Southland, but she's done a, a tremendous job in the Southland. So, that would be one that's really good. I know y'all have already had one of my favorite players ever, uh, Kendra Whitehead. She's already been on. Yep. Um, 
I would say uh, one of my other favorite players who is a phenomenal coach uh, is Beth Jilson at Texas Women's University. All right. She would, she would be awesome. Uh, she's, she's just, she's done so great. I mean, Kendra and Beth both have had, you know, multiple coach of the year awards, championships, all that good stuff. So, um, and then the third one would be, uh, the new head coach at TCU, get Mark on, man. He's, we need he's awesome. Yeah. He's a yeah, rock star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we, we actually, him. we're going to play at TCU this year. Uh, he and I both, um, I think we're kindred spirits. We love three point drills and, and shooting threes. And, um, a few years ago, they had a, they had a drill that they put on Twitter. It was called the Oregon team threes drill. And so we started working on it and, uh, we beat their best uh, record. And so I told him we're going to start calling it the ACU team threes. And uh, so anyway, but he's a, he's a tremendous coach. I was so happy for him when I heard that he got the TCU job and just a uh, high quality um, man. And um, he'll, he'll do a really good job at TCU. All right. Coach Gazzardo, coach Mark and coach Jilson, y'all are officially on the clock. Why? Because the <laughs> legend, the legend says so. Hey, we, you, you guys just got your ticket punch. We will be reaching out to you so we can get y'all on the show. Season four is going to be crazy. I'm super excited. The journey will continue forth with great names like that. So thank you so much for no. that coach. Good enough. But coach Julie, good enough. You got next. You are an inspiration, coach. You are a trendsetter. You are a trailblazer. You are an icon. You are authentic, genuine, extraordinary, and elite. You deserve a yeet. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I hate this show got to end. I know we took y'all a little bit longer, but this is what this is why we do it. This is why we do it. Shows like this one. Thank y'all for watching another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next. We told you season three is coming to an end, and I get emotional every time I say that because it's been just a fun three years. The 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 admiration, the support from the community has just been crazy. We can't do it without you guys, and so now we need to add ACU onto this roster. We got to get you guys in this thing. We need y'all to help us to keep continue this momentum into 2024, the year of the mom. But that's right, 2-4 is going to be our theme next year. So we need y'all to show us some love. Make sure you tap in, lock in with us at Sports Life Talk on all these social media platforms. We post content every day. And if you want to get on the show, if Coach Good Enough, she, you know, I ain't going to say she ain't think you was good enough. I'm just saying your name wasn't mentioned, but you are good enough, okay? So we need you to go to our website, sltugotnext.com. Go to the nomination tab. Tell us who you are. Tell us about yourself. We're going to reach out to you and we're going to audition you for the show. That's right. This is an open platform and we ain't forgot about who, who, who made us, right? So please make sure if you got a story that needs to be tell, told, you come to us and we're going to help you to tell that story. Kevin, what am I missing, man? I'm super excited right now. I'm almost in tears. I'm over here trying to fight back. But what, what am I missing, KT? Check us out Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Central. Yep. And podcast. You don't have to watch the show on YouTube. We appreciate you for watching on YouTube. Please do watch it, B. Yeah, Jones. Watch, we, both, watch we, it and listen. We're super, we're super close to getting monetized on, on YouTube. So thank y'all oh, so much awesome. for watching YouTube. But you can also take the show on the road wherever you listen to your podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can listen to the, vo the voice version of this or the audio version, which is so, so y'all hear my voice. Y'all hear that. You know what I'm saying? That Louisiana, that, that cayenne pepper I got going on right now. So all right, KT, man, let's go home, man. Let's get Coach Good enough back out of here, man. And that's a wrap on our time with a basketball coach and wizard. Just like a game saving block, these insights are here to defend your journey to success. Get out there, play your best game, and remember, every shot you don't take is a missed opportunity. Until our next podcast huddle, keep aiming high. Because if you ain't good enough, good, good enough, enough baby, baby. I, I work, work hard. hard. Yeah! Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. Thank you, Coach. What's Life Talk Nation? We love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. I knew you had next because you always working. You always grinding. You're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did.
it and huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talking mushroom, you are what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Talking this